Coordination is important in chess. You need your pieces to be working together harmoniously to achieve certain tasks on the board. And when they don't, they are very, very vulnerable to attacks. And today we're going to be looking at five examples where the opponent's pieces are not coordinated whatsoever. And we can take advantage of those via very beautiful and stunning tactics. So these five tactics are challenging. They are tricky. They're quite long. And so I do think that they will be great exercises for you to improve your chess. And without any further ado, let's jump straight in. This is from Chess Calculation Training. We are moving on to chapter two, which is bad coordination and punishing bad coordination. And that is indeed what we are going to do. Let me flip the board with the white pieces. What tactic exists using the theme of bad coordination? This is, I think, a really good one that will illustrate to you what really bad coordination looks like in chess. So pause the video, white to play here. What is the move? So in this position, the correct solution is to take the knight first, and after they recapture, go rook to b4. And the point is, after the queen moves, we have this really stunning idea, knight e7 check. If their king moves, we're going to win the exchange. But if they take, that is even worse. We go queen to c8, check, they have to block, and then rook b8, game over. And this is a real clear example of what I mean by bad coordination. Their bishop is attacked and it cannot be defended. Their rook is not only uh, on a square where it can't defend, but it also harms the queen's sight towards the bishop. If the rook was on e6, for example, well, then this could be a different story after queen a3. Similarly, the rooks are not lined up, so ideas of rook d8 do not exist. There's no counterattack. Just these four pieces do not work harmoniously, and we've taken advantage of that via this very nice knight sacrifice. Exercise number two, white to play. How can you punish the bad coordination here? Pause the video for some more time. The correct move in this position is bishop takes d4, again taking a piece, and the point is that after queen takes, you have this really nice idea of going either queen e1 or queen f4. Either way, you're defending over e3, so there's no check, and the point is, well, behind the queen lies a rook which is not defended because of the poor development and therefore lack of coordination between these queenside pieces. If we go back for a second, they can take with the bishop, but after queen h6, this is not a huge improvement. We still have a deadly attack, and just as an example, after queen d6, the best move, there is already this idea of simplifying by playing rook takes d4, queen h7, queen h8, and very simply going into this endgame position where white has a healthy advantage. Exercise number three is on the screen. This one is one of my favorite ones. White to play, pause the video for some more time. What can you do here with the white pieces? So the correct move in this position is the really nice bishop c6. What? Why are we playing on this side of the board? I'm sure many of you were thinking to attack on the king side, but this does help in that attack because after bishop takes, queen f6 is a lot stronger now because after queen g7, we suddenly have this check. The queen moves back, rook h8, and we win the queen with a winning position. Now, it should be noted that they do have alternatives, but those alternatives do not yield better results because if they don't take, unfortunately for them, we're going to take. And suddenly, after queen to f6, there's no longer a way to stop this checkmate. Now, the really funny thing, the icing on the cake, is the fact that rook a8 is also not possible because the bishop takes. And this is, I think, where the idea of bad coordination comes into play, uh, because otherwise this could be a good defensive resource. But unfortunately here, this is not possible. So their pieces, unfortunately, just cannot work harmoniously and defend each other. So in this position, what is the winning move for black? Pause the video for some more time. The win here is rook takes h2, giving away the exchange for a deadly attack because after king h2, queen h6, check. The king moves back, now knight f3, check. And after the king moves, this kind of looks like some of this, you know, checkmating idea, but that does not really work because their rook guards the square. Instead, what you should have visualized is that the queens are now staring at each other. So after knight g1, check, it's very hard to defend this queen and get out of the check. The only square is king d3, but now the final piece comes into the game, rook to b3 check, and we win the queen. Now, I think this one is especially nice because it shows the disparity in uh, peace coordination super well. Not only is this white queen undefended and these pieces are not really coordinated, 
but also all of our pieces are helping in the attack. So you can see the, the real difference in piece quality, and this is why black has this resource. And finally, puzzle number five, black to play in this position, where is the win? Pause the video for some more time. So the move here is rook takes g2, and after king takes g2, the very, very subtle queen to e8. And this carries a number of threats. The obvious threat is against the knight. However, not so simple to see is this idea of going c5 check, unleashing the bishop, but also now unleashing the attack on the queen, which would win the queen. So for example, knight g3, c5 wins. Now they can go queen to b3, and after we take, they get some level of counterplay, but this is not sufficient. We simply slide over the king to f8, and the attack for us continues with c5 coming, with the queen strong, here, it's really hard to defend.